I want you to imagine that I have some curve. It might be a nice curve, for example, it might be a circle. Or it's also possible you've got some like bizarre random curve, who knows what it is, something like that. Now, neither of these things that I've drawn is the graph of a function. Indeed, neither of these two things is going to pass a vertical line test. So, when I'm trying to think about what a curve is, I'm not saying that a curve is the graph of a function. Indeed, it's something more general. So one way that we can describe these, these more general curves, curves that are not just the graph of a function, is so-called parametrically. And the idea behind describing a curve parametrically is to write both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, maybe even a z-coordinate or more if I have them, all of those different coordinates in terms of some other variable, a parameter that I call t. In other words, I want to be able to say that the, the x variable is some function of t. I want to say that the y variable is some function of t. If I have it, I want to say that the z variable is going to be some function of t. And in each case, I would give some function like t squared or sine of t or e to the t. And the hope would be that by plotting what x, y, and z were going to be for various values of t, that that would sweep out the curve. In this first example, both x and y have been given as some function of this parameter t. x of t is cos of t, and y of t is sine of t. So let's try to graph this. Let's try to see what this curve is going to look like. And I'm going to begin by just sort of computing a bunch of different points and, and see if I can sort of interpolate what the curve is going to look like. So if t is going to be equal to 0, then cosine of 0 is just going to be 1, and sine of 0 is just going to be 0. And I can do this for a bunch of different points. Okay, so we've got a couple points, and let's see whether we can put them on a graph. I have this point, which is given by 1, 0. I have this point over here, which is 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. I have this point up here, which is the point 0, 1. And it kind of looks like I could connect these together into a big circle. And indeed, that's what's going to be the case. This particular parametric set of equations is going to graph out a circle. Now, you shouldn't believe me just from a couple different points, but consider how trigonometry was defined. If I have some angle, and typically we call this angle theta, but, but because I've written it as x of t and sine of t, I'm going to call this angle t. Then, if the hypotenuse is going to have length 1, then we know that the adjacent over the hypotenuse is cos theta, so the adjacent over 1 is going to be cos theta. That tells me that my x is going to be cosine of t, and therefore that my y is going to be sine of t. So indeed, our trigonometric uh, notion of a circle of radius 1 has this property that any point on the circle, its x-coordinate, is cosine of t, and its y-coordinate is sine of t. We could also uh, go back to our Pythagorean formulas. If I wanted to investigate what x squared plus y squared was going to be, well, x is cosine, so this is cosine squared of t, and y is sine, so sine squared of t. And, and we have this Pythagorean identity. Indeed, it, it, was, it was demonstrated for this precise reason to be precisely 1. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, and this is the equation of a circle. So however we want to think about it, this particular parametric curve graphs out a circle. Parametric curves can do all sorts of really kind of funny and, and often beautiful things. So I've gone over to Wolfram Alpha here, I've put in an x of t as some function, I've put in a y of t as some function, and let's see what the graph of that is going to look like. We get this bizarre looking thing where we've got these sort of these circles and this little heart shaped thing in the middle. If I steal much of the same basic structure of the function, but I just change some of the numbers just a little bit, so this is the same story, but changing the coefficients, then I'm going to get this little picture. So parametric curves can, can do all sorts of kind of interesting things and show various patterns that just the graphs of a function
which had to, to pass the vertical line test, could not. And, and you're always welcome to go and Google something like beautiful parametric curves. You get a whole variety of different and interesting such curves. One last somewhat technical point. Suppose that I have some function y and it's given to be f of x. So uh, what I normally think of is that maybe this is a graph like say x squared and that, that what we have is a curve but the curve is a graph of a function and it passes the vertical line test. Now I want to think about this as being a parametric curve. So I can convert uh, any function, any function at all, I can convert to a parametric curve by simply taking that the x variable as a function of t is just itself, is just going to be t. So in other words, I've just sort of relabeled it. I used to call it x, now I call it t. And then the y variable as a function of t is going to be given as whatever the function f of t was. So in other words, now I have an x of t and a y of t, so they are both written in terms of the parameter t, and of course, if I graph out this parametric curve, I'm going to get the exact same thing I do as I just graph the function. So this is sort of like a technical point to note that the broader class of curves are going to be parametric curves. And what we've seen before, the graphs of functions are sort of a, a subset of this larger category of parametric curves.